I'm here today to welcome you onto the additional territory of the Huron Wyandotte, Haudenosaunee, and the Mississauga of the Credit. We ask that you honor the land, the water, and the people living on this land. It is our collective responsibility to look after the land and take care of this land and honor the people who lived here. This Labor Day, we ask that you work towards a just transition for all. Miigwech. Thank you and happy Labor Day. Labor Day in 2020 is going to be unlike any other in our history. We've been marching on the streets since 1872. And it's the largest Labor Day parade in all of North America. 25,000 women and men working in every sector of the economy take to the streets to show our pride in what we do and our calls for a more just world. But this year, it's going to be virtual. We will be showcasing the work done by union members from every sector of the economy and sharing their message of hope, determination and solidarity. Our theme is a just recovery for all. So many people have been impacted by the COVID pandemic. People have lost their jobs, lost income and faced tremendous pressure to keep families healthy and safe. Governments at every level have been called upon to weave a social safety net to help people get through this crisis. But the pandemic has also laid bare the realities of income inequality, poverty jobs, and systemic racism that hurts all of us. That's why we need a just recovery for all. But the labor movement and our community allies do have a solution to this crisis, and that's a just recovery for all. Put people's health and well-being first, strengthen the social safety net, prioritize needs of workers and communities, build resilience to prevent future crises, build solidarity and equity across communities of all indigenous rights. This year our parade has become virtual. We'll be showing you footage of the excitement and energy from past parades and the determination that we have today to fight for a better Canada. Our message, Just Recovery, that's on a fleet of buses all across Toronto and York Region, thanks to the support of our affiliated unions. And we'll have a virtual parade program you can see on our website, laborcouncil.ca.
Hello friends, boy I miss seeing you out on University Avenue. <laughs> Hasn't COVID-19 been a challenging time for everyone? Yeah, here at Actor Toronto, our performers in the film and television industry, in animation and video games, well, we've been terribly affected, tremendously affected by the shutdown of our industry. But on the positive side of it, well, is that we've seen the role that culture and artists play in keeping us company through this isolating time. And I'm heartened with the solidarity that we've demonstrated to stay connected, even though we can't be together physically. We've stayed connected in support and admiration for our frontline workers. We've stayed connected in successful lobbying for CERB, to provide income support for workers in the gig economy. And we've stayed connected in our commitment to fight injustice, anti-black racism, and police violence. So I hope we can all take a little time this Labor Day to celebrate the gains that we have made for workers and what we will continue to do together fighting the good fight. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. Happy Labor Day. Hello sisters and brothers, my name is Ainsworth Spence and I work at SEIU Healthcare and I'm also the co-chair at the Toronto and York Region Labour Council. Hi, I'm Danica Izzard, I'm a teacher and I'm also the co-chair of the Toronto York Region Labour Council. Happy Labour Day and wow, what a year 2020 has been. Racial tension, anti-black racism and of course the COVID-19 pandemic. But one thing I know as labor unionists, we know how to pivot and persevere. Disrupting racism is important now more than ever. And that is why we are urging unions to endorse the Charter of Inclusive Workplaces and Communities. Dividing people because of race, religion, ancestry, or any other difference that undermines human rights serves only to weaken our unions and our society. We commit to standing up for the rights and dignity of everyone in order to promote inclusive, just, and respectful workplaces and communities. And that's why we affirm that anti-black and all other forms of racism, xenophobia, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, and bigotry have no place in our workplaces or communities. Discrimination, and acts of hate against union members and others marginalizes and excludes them from participating fully in unions, workplaces, and their communities. The dignity of every member is essential to a healthy and vibrant union and workplace. We will continue to work with all levels of government, indigenous peoples, civil society, and communities to develop policies, programs, and initiatives to reduce and eliminate racism, hate, and bigotry. We must work together to nurture inclusive workplaces and strengthen our shared commitment to our shared values of equality, respect, justice, and dignity for all. Workers celebrate Labor Day every September. But when you get right down to it, every day is Labor Day. When you enjoy time off from work, it's Labor Day. 
When you return home to your family safe and healthy, it's Labor Day. And when you get paid a fair wage to put food on the table, it's Labor Day. The rights we all enjoy today were fought for by our sisters and brothers who came before us. And these rights still need to be fought for today, or they'll be put at risk. We need to fight discrimination and harassment in the workplace. Stand together to guarantee your family can come first through expanded parental leave. And we must maintain the importance of unions and the labor movement so that our sisters and brothers can continue to make a positive difference for all of us. So let's honor the sacrifice, struggle, and progress of those who came before us so we can all enjoy our lives today and build better lives for tomorrow. On the first Monday of every September, workers officially celebrate Labor Day. But all year round, make every day Labor Day. A message from ATU Local 113. Toronto belongs to all of us. We're stronger together. Over 5,000 outside employees are the backbone of our city. We keep your city streets clean. We work 24-7 to make our drinking water safe. When you need us the most, we're here for you. At QP Local 416, we're proud of the strong partnerships we've built. We're working together to make Toronto great. So join us. And give a big thumbs up to hard work and quality service. And let's continue to build a city we're proud to call home. Ever since the pandemic started, our members have been at the front lines. From the people who manage the crisis at Toronto Public Health, to the library workers, to the transit workers, to the garbage collectors, to the firefighters, the paramedics, even the long-term care nurses who looked after the elderly. Every single one of them have stepped up to help our city. This fall, we're gonna have uh, decisions that are gonna be difficult to make at City Council what services to expand, what services to keep, and how to make up for the shortfalls. And the federal government and the provincial government both need to step up to make sure that our city is gonna run and run in a just manner. We can't just stop our governments from turning their backs on workers. We need to make sure that the future is a just recovery. That we fight for jobs that people can depend on to feed their families, to look after their families, to contribute to society. And we need to make sure that those principles are gonna be included in everything that we do in the future. So this Labor Day, 
Let's make sure we have the fighting spirit of all those who have passed before us through the CNE, through the gates, to be heard loud and proud that Toronto is going to be a just city and that we're going to make sure we're going to have a just recovery for all. Happy Labor Day, folks. Councilman Bob Cutts here, and I'm on a mission to save this damn city some money. Folks, let me ask you a question. Do you really need the services and programs our city provides? Trick question! Of course you do! The real question is, do we actually need experienced professionals running them? <laughs> How hard can it be to take care of little Jimmy here? make sure Gladys gets the right medication. <gasps> or filter water! Think of the money I can save this city. And with your help, I can get it done! Who's with me? Libraries are absolutely essential to a just recovery for all in the City of Toronto. Library workers help parents and caregivers teach their children how to read and learn to love books. We help seniors and youth stay connected and engaged in their communities. And when someone has lost their job and they're looking for a place to go to get back on their feet, library workers are there for them every step of the way. Libraries are the great equalizer and the Toronto Public Library workers have been serving the City of Toronto since 1883. As more branches begin to reopen, welcome back to all of the people of Toronto who love their libraries. We want to be able to continue to serve you in a safe and sustainable way going forward. Remember that libraries work because we do. Happy Labor Day. from the Toronto and York Region Labour Council. I want to celebrate all the achievements of the last year and more. York Communities for Public Education is a coalition of students, parents, educators, and education workers who want to invest in publicly funded education. We did a launch of the York Communities for Public Education and had an incredible array of performances from spoken word, from dancing, and others, which all illustrated how important it is for children to have a creative and artistic means to express themselves and not to simply invest into teaching to the test. Treat our students with love and care! To that end, we've also held a Chinese press conference where frontline education workers told the Chinese media how Ford and Lecce's cuts to education impacted their classrooms. We've held several tailgate parties in York Region to support education workers and transit workers to leading key fights to say keep transit public and don't steal our subways. We've worked to build relationships with political decision makers in York Region to build a more worker-friendly community. We've also had frank conversations with Black community leaders in York Region to talk about how we can together dismantle anti-Black racism from our institutions. So for all that and more, we wanted to celebrate this year's Labor Day with you from the Toronto and York Region Labor Council and all of our affiliates. Choose a baker, Canada Post, it 
ETT, the Elementary Teachers of Toronto, stand in solidarity for a just recovery for all. has been fighting for economic justice, for social justice, for racial justice, and in the last two decades for climate justice as well. We have representatives here from all kinds of unions, from teachers, from public sector unions, healthcare workers, private sector unions, the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists, the Filipino Workers Network, our Community Benefits Network, that has negotiated jobs for racialized and indigenous youth in the trades and in the white collar jobs along the Eglinton Cross Town, putting real jobs and climate together to make a future for communities.
I was on the 911 call telling them that somebody is threatening my life. My partner is being kicked in the head, knocked out. She cannot stand. When they get there, they blow me off. They blow off my partner. She leaves and goes to the hospital. They don't even ask her her name. He went to go canvas the neighborhood himself after the police refused to do it. And they said that it's a he said, she said thing and there's nothing they could do. He was threatened with death. His partner was kicked in the head. This is not he said, she said. We see the differential racist treatment when it's a black victim of crime. Police refusing to take it seriously, refusing to believe black witnesses, doing the bare minimum of investigation and declaring it case closed. This is systemic racism of the word for Two workers call for charges to be laid now. Yeah. It's time for us all to step forward, keep up the fight. Stronger together. Stronger together. Labor Day, safe recovery. Foodsters United know what it is to have your world change on a dime. Together we mounted a historic campaign that changed the course of labor law in Canada and around the world. But then we had the rug pulled out from us by a corporation that shows greed over compassion during a pandemic. As foodsters, we've always had the future in our sights, but now ensuring we create a better world is more important than ever. We cannot let this opportunity pass us by. It is imperative for us and those who follow us that we ensure a just recovery.
Brothers and sisters, comrades, today is a very special day for workers across this country. It's the day when we come together to celebrate, of course, our achievement over the last year and reflect, of course, in the challenges we still face ahead of us. Due to COVID-19, we're not going to be able to get together the way we have done in the past. But equally, though, we can still celebrate with our families and our friends in our home, recognizing fundamentally we must acknowledge the struggles of workers across this country, but equally we must of course also reflect on the challenges ahead, how we must continue to build a great country for all workers where we share in the fruits of our labor. Since the pandemic, both the Canadian Labour Congress and our affiliates have stepped up our effort to ensure governments right across our land understood the importance of the challenges we are faced of working people, but equally not just our members. I know this is an ambitious plan, but it's going to require your help and assistance and your involvement. We're committed to this fight, but more importantly, activists and leadership across this country, we're going to have to raise our voice to ensure that what this pandemic has exposed do not remain a feature of our country going forward. I'm a vocational instructor with the Labor Education Center for our Career Apprenticeship Training Program, TradeLinks. And like most of you, I'm recording this video from my new office, my room, where it is pretty challenging to run a Career Apprenticeship Training Program online, but like most of you, we are making the best of a difficult situation. TradeLinks is a 12-week sector-focused Career Apprenticeship Training Program for people who are interested in the skilled trades and construction industry. During these 12 weeks, Participants receive one-on-one -on -one support in exploring their options in the construction trades, a focus on working skills, um, so whether it be team development, uh, leadership skills, industry-recognized workers, health and safety certifications, and construction math. We hope that, or well, I hope that every participant that comes through our program is given the skills and resources to start a career in the construction trade and land an apprenticeship in their respective trades. But more importantly, I hope that when they leave our program, they leave feeling confident that they can achieve whatever it is that they set their mind to. We encourage them to not only become community advocates for justice, but also to empower, to empower them to become their own advocate. Thank you for listening. Happy Labor Day, everybody. A just recovery for all has to include quality, public long-term care, pharmacare, and child care. This last April, we were all shocked at the tragic loss of life in long-term care homes. These deaths were often the consequences of underfunded and privatized public services. There is no place for profit in long-term care. Second, Canada is the only industrialized country that has public health care but not paid prescription drugs. Yet those with chronic health conditions are most at risk of COVID and many lack paid health benefits. Finally, we need affordable childcare so women, still the primary caregivers, can return to work. We know there can be no recovery without a sheet recovery. So this Labor Day, please join us in fighting alongside the Congress for nationwide childcare, pharmacare, and long-term care, so we achieve a just recovery for all. OPSU, the Ontario Public Service Employees Union, is proud to join with the labor movement and allies in celebrating Labor Day and saying a just recovery for all. OPSU represents more than 56,000 members in Toronto, including workers in the Ontario Public Service, community colleges, and the broader public sector, including social service agencies, the liquor board, and hospitals and healthcare sector. Every day, OPSU members work to deliver quality education, public health care, safe and healthy workplaces, and a green and healthy environment. As we mobilize and fight for a just recovery, OPSU has its focus on worker and community health and safety, decent work and a strong social safety net, climate justice, and freedom from racism. Today, OPSU is celebrating Labor Day and is proud to be part of a just recovery for all along with Labor Council and allies. Happy Labor Day.
It's incredible. Uh, I only have good things to say about the program. Um, just, just the doors they open for so many black youth. Um, I think this program is necessary. Um, and I think that more black youth should take advantage of it. And so we can have more black youth in the construction field and, and more money back in our community. Hello, my name is Rosemary Powell, Executive Director of the Toronto Community Benefits Network. We are proud of the relationships that we've been able to establish and grow over the last seven years with our partners in the construction industry. Through community benefits agreements, hundreds of workers from underrepresented groups have been hired on projects such as the Eglinton Crosstown Project, the Finch West LRT, the Rexdale Casino Woodbine, and the West Park Healthcare Centre, and there are more to come. It has come to our attention that there is still work to be done, as in recent weeks there have been some racially motivated incidents on some construction sites. The Toronto Community Benefits Network joins with our allies in the construction industry to condemn hate and anti-black racism. We must recognize that incidents like these are an indication that systemic racism exists in organizational structures, such as in recruitment and retention, that creates barriers to access for people from underrepresented groups. And we need to build on this momentum and create an action plan now to root out the vestiges of systemic racism that continues to undermine the equitable, inclusive, and respectful workplace that the construction industry is trying to achieve. As a first step, we call on our allies to listen and to hear the personal accounts of employees who are racialized, black and indigenous, who have experienced racism in the workplace. Secondly, amplify their voices in decision-making spaces to create concrete action plan to end discrimination and to create welcoming, safe and inclusive workplaces. By acknowledging, rooting out and removing systemic racism, we will be better positioned to recruit, support and develop the next generation of builders so that we can continue to build world-class quality infrastructure in Toronto. Today, let us celebrate labor. Let us celebrate decades of pioneering brothers and sisters who fought for recovery for all. We cannot give up. It may feel unprecedented, but it is part of our ongoing journey and collective effort. Thank you, Toronto, York, Labour Council. Thank you, Labour Community Services. United Way Greater Toronto is proud to stand with you and celebrate Labour Day 2020. Hi, I am Father Mohamed, Executive Director of Labour Community Service, connecting the Toronto and York Regions Labour Council story of 220,000 frontline workers and the United Way of Greater Toronto's 270 community agencies for more than 36 years. By fighting on the front lines of social justice, partnering with the United Way of Greater Toronto to support fundraising initiatives, and by providing educational opportunities, together we continue to lift our communities up. A just recovery for all includes the continuation of addressing the inequities that existed prior to COVID-19 that disproportionately has a negative impact on racialized community. This year, we wish everybody a safe and healthy Labor Day. Labor Day. This is Sal Maltese, IBW Local 353. What does Labor Day mean to me? It means all of the labor unions getting together, 
helping the community, supporting everybody, and ensuring that everybody has a day to rest at the end of the summer, getting ready for the new school year. Looking at the labor community services and the labor advocate training that helps everybody reflect and understand how to deal with people on a regular basis and help support each other moving forward. Have a great and safe Labor Day weekend. Happy Labor Day, brothers and sisters. My name is Judith Logan Junith, and I'm a proud member of IFPTE Local 160. Things that I learned about the Labor Advocate Training. It's offered through Labor Community Services. That training that I received has become invaluable as we all navigated through COVID. We are all in this together, and it's more important than ever that we support each other and then we advocate and learn how to advocate. Please consider signing up for the course and happy Labor Day. Hi, my name is Rochev and I'm a grocery store worker on the front lines and I don't have paid sick days. In fact, 60% of workers don't have paid sick days, so it's almost impossible to follow the advice of health professionals to stay home when sick. We've always needed employer paid sick days for short-term illnesses, but during COVID-19, it's a matter of public health. This Labor Day, I am speaking out for at least seven days of legislated, job protected, employer paid sick days permanently, plus an additional 14 days during public health outbreaks. Los trabajadores inmigrantes han estado manteniendo la economía de este país. Desde las fábricas, desde el cuidado de los niños y ancianos, trabajadores migrantes son trabajadores esenciales. One in 22 people in the country, that's 1.6 million people are migrant and undocumented. These are students, workers, refugees, these are families, and they aren't able to access healthcare, couldn't get emergency medical support during COVID-19, and aren't able to speak up when they are faced with a bad boss. We want to have a single tier society where all workers have the same rights, opportunities and protections, and that means full and permanent immigration status for all. Here in Ontario, 1,200 migrant farm workers have gotten sick. Three have died as a result of the fact that they don't have permanent immigration status for all. This Labor Day, I'm calling the Prime Minister to demand status for all. Will you join me? My name is Andrea Babington. I'm an organizer with Unite Here Local 75. We represent 8,000 hotel workers and food service workers across the GTA. 98% of our members was laid off work due to the COVID pandemic. And since then, our members have been lobbying the government for improvement in EI and the CERB benefit. They have been pushing their employers to apply for the Canadian Emergency Wage Relief Subsidy Benefit. As we prepare for the reopening of the hospitality sector, workers are calling on the government for stronger health and safety measures in the workplace. They're calling on the government to support hotel workers to return to a safe workplace. Let's stand together. Hotel workers should not be left behind. 
Let's stand for a just recovery for all. Happy Labor Day. Thanks to COVID-19, Labor Day 2020 is quite different this year. And that especially in these very trying times, we're all missing the in-person connection and solidarity that the Labor Day break brings. But the work of the labor movement is more important now than it has ever been in our lifetimes. Fighting for the health and safety of working folks in the face of a heinous virus. And employers that are providing safe workplaces lifting up the two million working Ontarians who lost income during the pandemic, pushing back against Doug Ford's cruel agenda of austerity and cuts, demanding justice for Black, Indigenous and racialized folks in this province, and fighting for a recovery that works for working people and their families, not just the wealthy and well-connected. It's clear that our movement is alive and well here in Ontario, and worldwide. I want to thank all of you for your tireless work. In particular, I want to thank all of the folks who have worked on the front lines of this pandemic. You have gone above and beyond throughout this crisis, and we all owe you a debt that cannot be repaid. We can ensure that every worker in this province has the PPE and safety protocols you need to be safe and healthy at work. And I know that we are all proud to be a part of a movement rooted in solidarity. The people united will never be defeated. Happy Labor Day. Hello, my name is Sue. I am with Local 325 and I am fighting for a safe community. I'm surely with the Canadian Union of Bury and general workers, and I want life to return to normal. Hi, I'm Marco Raman, a brother of the Canadian Union of Brewery General Workers, Local 325. I'm fighting for and standing up for all the nurses, teachers, all, all the manufacturing workers, uh, a just recovery for all. I'm with Local 325. I'm fighting for my kids. We are members of Local 325. We stand for solidarity and a just recovery for all. Cheers! Some think of Canada Post as just letters and stamps. But here's the thing. In the next economy, our postal service could deliver everything from food to clean energy and create thousands of green jobs in the process. Canada Post is this country's largest transportation and shipping network. And we own it. There are almost twice as many post offices as Tim Hortons. That's a lot of post offices. So how can we use this powerful network to drive the transition to a zero carbon Canada? We could put solar panels on post offices with retrofits to save energy. We could add charging stations to power our postal fleet and your electric car. Post offices could also provide banking services without the big bank's unfair fees and finance green infrastructure and businesses. We could build a fleet of electric postal vehicles built by unionized workers here in Canada. The postal service could deliver affordable food to remote communities in the north and support digital innovation across the country. With expanded door-to-door -door service, postal workers could coordinate with other care services and check in on people who sign up, helping us to live in our homes for longer as we age. We are ready to leap to a green economy based on caring for the earth and each other. A revitalized postal service can deliver it. 
From coast to coast to coast, support for this vision is growing fast. Visit deliveringcommunitypower.ca to join us, add your ideas, and get involved. And share this. This pandemic has posed many challenges for our society, but the labor movement in Toronto and York Region are responding. We're deeply involved in struggles for decent work, for quality public services, and for an education system that allows every student to succeed. We're committed to challenging systemic racism, but also fighting for a world that is sustainable, fighting for an economy that is truly sustainable and offers good jobs for all. We have been on a remarkable journey since 1872. On Labor Day, we honor those who laid the foundation for a movement that has been so much part of Toronto's history and pledge to work for justice every day so we can all have a better future.